What's going on guys and welcome to Rabbits Used Cars. How's everybody doing today? Rocking and rolling, hope everybody's having a good morning. You know, I was thinking about something while I was in the shower this morning. <sighs> Almost reminiscing about my life. I'm over here shampooing my hair. So running down my body, hot water. I take my showers literally piped straight from hell hot. I was thinking, maybe I'm a bad influence. You know, and, and it leads into a really funny story. <sighs> but have you ever noticed, like, when you were growing up and your parents always warned you about that one guy? Like, I don't like him. You watch him. He's going to get you in trouble. And my parents did me the same way. The only problem was, the older I got, I realized I'm that guy that my parents warned me about. You know, I'm, I'm, I get people riled up. You know, I'm a motivator, but sometimes I can motivate you to do some pretty crazy shit. And um, I mean, it was all in good fun, but you take that and then on the other end of the spectrum with me, extremely competitive. And we've talked about this a little bit. And that can be dangerous because I can share that ability with other people and get them pumped up and now they're competitive and they're feeling it. And you know, I grew up in racing, got a racing background. And, and that's why I don't do it. And uh, which we've covered in videos. But I'm very competitive, and I get it honest. My father was very competitive, obviously, being a drag racer. My grandfather was competitive, obviously, in everything. You know, I was always that guy. You know, even, even as early as going back to the grocery store. I'll never forget when I took my very first job interview to be a bag boy at Winn-Dixie. Google it, it's an old grocery store. But to be a bag boy, and I remember the manager with his vest on and his tie. Where do you see yourself? This is 14 year old Rob. Where do you see yourself? I said, I see me taking your job. Now, do you think I'd be the manager of a grocery store? Hell no. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking it or pest control guys. I don't need those coming after me. But you know, I'm that guy. Like I've set myself so I'll make it happen. And I was I was a pretty damn good bag boy. Paper or plastic. I know now it's you bring your own bags, it's just weird. But anyway, motivator competitive. Rob, where's this headed? And I know you saw the title of this. So I don't talk a lot about my second marriage, to be honest with you. It didn't last that long. I was married to a very nice lady. Um, we were better off friends than lovers. It was kind of a fling thing. I was married for nine months, and it was literally a joke. It was a cakewalk. And I mean, not saying what we had was a joke, it was special and all that stuff too. But, you know, so she had three kids. She had three sons. Two of them were extremely athletic and really outgoing. The oldest one, he was a bit of a hermit. You know, he, he didn't get out much. You know, he watched a lot of TV, read books. He was really smart, but he was kind of quiet, a little shy. And, and naturally, he was my buddy. Like, I liked him, you know? And it was kind of funny. He, he come to me and he goes, Rob, I want to join the Boy Scouts. And I said, you know, hey, I was a Boy Scout for about two weeks, but I was a Boy Scout. Got my little, me and Matt was talking about this. I got my little blue shirt, my little bandana thing with a little, whatever they call it, looking thing, and everything. Got to wear it twice. But he wanted to join the Boy Scouts, and he was adamant about it. And I think it's a good thing. I really do. You know, it teaches the kids how to tie knots and teamwork. And, and then there's some really good underlying lessons with the Boy Scouts. And I knew that. So I told him, I said, hey, let's look it up and see. Found out, you know, we had a troop right there near the house. They had a big building back behind the church. They would meet once a week, yada, yada, yada. So, hey, we showed up. And, you know, I'd always hang out, you know, sit with the other dads and stuff, and shoot the bull and whatnot. And 
just making sure, you know, he was transitioning into this good and all that stuff. And it was just, it was just me and him, you know, his mom didn't come, it was just us. We were there like a few weeks and a really big event and something I never got to do in my short Boy Scout career was coming up. It was the Pinewood Derby. Naturally being a car guy, this is something like, this is our time to shine. This is where old stepdad steps in here. I'll never forget, you know, you had to buy the kits. You know, the little, they come in a little box, you know, like a toothpaste box. You know, a little block of wood and your four little wheels and your four little nail axles. And, you know, you could cut your wood and cut it and shave it down or whatever you need to do. It had to weigh a certain amount. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it had to weigh a certain amount. You could paint it and stickers and whatever. You know, basically they set them up on a long wooden track that's on a hill and let them go and first one to the other side wins. Um, so let me stop that story to tell you a couple other side notes to this. One, I'm not a very handy man around the house. Um, if you've got car trouble or if you need someone to sell you a car, I got you. You need me to build you a birdhouse or install mini blinds or, you know, put in a, a, a ground fault circuit socket, you don't want me. This is why we have Kobe. I'm the kind of guy, if I'm not good at something and I know I'm not going to be good at it, I know not to do it. I don't even attempt it. That being said, this is a woodworking thing. I have no woodworking tools. I have never run a table saw. I have never ran any kind of saw, for that matter. And, uh, and I want them to do good, you know? And of course, I'm very competitive. So what do I do? Back to my classic saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. I pick up the phone and I start talking to a few friends. I got a few friends to do woodwork and things like that. I had a buddy of mine that built custom furniture and he was a hot rod guy. So naturally, me and him were on the same page. I said, buddy, I need your help. I said, what? I said, I kind of got myself in a pickle. And I said, I have talked up being the end all be all of Pinewood Derby cars to my stepson. And I can't let him down. And I said, I think you know me good enough that you know I'm full of shit. Help. He said, I got you covered. I got you covered. And he said, man, I've got $200,000 worth of woodworking equipment in this building. You know, all these fancy saws and CNC. I mean, he even had like a CNC machine for wood. It was insane. He said, hell, just come on by. He said, bring your kit. So we started talking. Well, naturally, being in racing, lighter is better. Well, not in the Pinewood Derby. You understand, you got to have some force to send you down that hill. Well, I got to playing on the internet. So this guy in Florida makes cheater parts for Pinewood Derby cars. And the thing is, so like I said, those are your only components. You got a block of wood, four wheels, four little nail axles. He made cheater axles that had slight bends in them to run the wheels in, um, which is not in the rules. You can have crooked wheels. Well, you gotta think about it, you got less rolling resistance because you're running around on the edge of the wheel. But he also made cheater wheels. And basically, they were molded with the Boy Scouts of America logos on the tires, but they were cut down and trimmed to where they're running right on, I mean, you're just a razor edge. And they look just like so if you run those wheels and those axles, you have way less rolling resistance than a normal car with straight wheels. So I found these parts naturally. We got us a few sets of those. Just, you know, let me check them out. So I was talking to my buddy about the design of this thing. You know, and everybody builds them like a little bullet, you know, like real sh you know, slopey, you know, whatever, like a doorstop, you know? And I, I, I'm a little more style oriented than that. I wanted something that was gonna look the part and wanted something that was going to be fast. So I'm talking to my buddy. I'm telling him, I can't lose. We got to win. He goes, well, we had a little kit. We got those cheater parts in. and We're playing around. And keep in mind, we're going to scout meetings all along the way. And you got these kids are bringing their, they're bringing theirs. And they're showing you, I shaved, you know, sanded on this one today. I got it all trimmed out and this and this. So I got to talking to the guy in Florida. And he said, if you want to make it fast, 
you add more weight. Obviously. He you know, said, so you got this thing where a roll, but he said, you want like a bowling ball on, on a ball bearing. Just, that's what you want. Well, obviously, they weigh these things. Back to racing. Anybody that's in racing will tell you, it ain't how good you are. It's how good you cheat and get away with it. So my buddy had the bright idea, well, when I take a piece of my wood that looks like Boy Scout wood, and we build a body, and we'll use a piece of that Boy Scout wood on it. He said, but hear me out. So we actually made, he actually made, well, not we, I, he, I watched. But he cut out a body that looked like a little nomad, like a Tri-5 nomad. So it was like a little wagon. But the body was actually wider than the Boy Scout piece of wood. So it was like that perfect length. But the wheels were tucked into the body. So it had fender, I mean, it was just perfect. And so you couldn't see from the side. It looked like the wheels were you're pretty straight. And so it looked right. So it was a little wider. But we used our Boy Scout piece of wood. So we did use that. And the weight was right. He hollowed out that whole bottom half and all that. Keep in mind, we bought a few kits. And he said, I got one better than that. He said, if you want to make this thing fast, he took that cool little nomad body he cut out. And he just cut the top off of it. Like, what are you doing? He goes, hang on. He takes the Boy Scout piece of wood, trims it like the top. So he has two tops, and the car's cut this way in half. He said, let me work on this tonight. And you come back. He said, come back here in a couple days. So I came back by there. And there's the body, and it's one piece again. I'm like, he must have glued it or something on there. No. He countersunk magnets into the bottom half, and then it had a little metal strip, just little two little metal strips. You got to think about it, those magnets, those little magnets are strong, so you can pick it up by it. And keep in mind, the weight was spot on with that one top on it. Well, he had another top he made. And this top weighed about 10 ounces, which is heavier than I think the cars were supposed to be, period. Click. Now, you put that top on that body. And the thing was so funny because it was so cheated up. You could put it on a table. It would find the angle. It just start rolling off. And I'm like, you know, we graphite the axle, all that stuff. Everything's been shaved, all that stuff. So he said, I think we got your body for you there, bud. I, I went to like Walmart and bought like a little Play-Doh tackle box to you know, put all our graphite or extra wheels and all this stuff. And we weighed this thing. It was spot on. So it comes the big race. And this was a big thing. Well, we actually went the week before. They had another Pinewood Derby race in Columbia, South Carolina, which is about an hour and a half down the road. So me, me, and, me and the kid went down there to kind of see how it works. And basically, the kid or the dad will set it up on the track. And once it's weighed, they don't really touch them that much. That's a good thing. So you want to pass tech, but we got to figure out how to get this other top on there without anybody else knowing it. And it's a pretty quick little deal, but you know what I'm saying. So, but the only problem with our car is, is it hits like this little like foam rubber thing at the end. Well, ours weighs a good bit more than everybody else's. So naturally it's going pretty fast down the track. Well, when it hits that foam pad, it makes a pretty damn mean thud where the rest of them are like, tut, tut. this one sounds like a damn baseball hitting a mitt. And I was thinking, if I have him down there at the bottom and I set it and you catch that thing just as soon as, because it's already past the line, it's just, you know, stop it. If you just grab it before it. So we practice this, like reaction time, just to grab it before it hits. And our excuse would be, well, we don't want to mess up our car and it's so nice because they have, you can move on to like national championships and stuff. So comes the day of the big race. And keep in mind, this is at a church. And we get there, and the whole fam's there, all the brothers and everything. My buddy, he's just all this stuff. And, and I was proud for him. I'm excited for him. And of course, everybody else is looking like Fido's ass, and we have a show car sitting there on the table. And I'll never forget, I had to take and put a screwdriver under the, like, like a lay a screwdriver sideways under it to keep it from rolling off the table. I mean, this thing is so cheated up, even with the light top on it. Of course, they come by and weigh them. They had a little digital scale, and they weighed them. Way right in. Compliment. Man, that's a hell of a build. 
You guys did a wonderful job. Thank you, sir. Like we built it. And uh, you know, that's very creative. I love this look and, you know, the wagon and all this stuff. So we uh, we uh, we go set up. And, you know, of course, it's eliminations. It's really like a drag race, basically. Just, you know, they run the every car out and then, of course, the losers. And then they have a loser bracket and a winner bracket. Well, obviously, we want to be on the winner bracket. So, you know, they run four at a time now. And naturally, you know, we get it weighed. And, well, we got to graphite our axles and just check out everything. So we're going over in the corner. I made sure we set up our little pit in the corner. And keep in mind, this is where all these extra kids and the wifey comes in handy because they're running blocks. So they're standing around you while I'm over here taking the other top that I have wrapped up in a terry cloth towel in my Plano tackle box. You know what I'm saying? It almost sounded like when you pull pull slide back on a nine millimeter, you know? And we set this thing up, and I set it up there. And I was wiping on it, you know, just kind of going with the look. Give my buddy the eye. Be ready to catch. You know, so he's down there. Ready to go. So it's just like, like playing catch in the yard. Phew. First pass. I mean, we, we put links on these kids. Didn't say anything. When we got down to the final round, it's two. And we won. And I mean, we won good and, and, and big. It was obvious. And he was so excited. And he got his bag, he got the merit badge, but he got like a little metal thing and a plaque and all of a sudden taking pictures. And I'll never forget. It wasn't the scout leader, but it was like one of the big Boy Scout guru, fuzzy hat guys, whatever, was there. And he pulls me to the side and he goes, Congratulations. He goes, never bring that car back. He goes, I have probably seen thousands and hosted thousands of Pinewood Derby events all over the Southeast. And I have seen some of the most cheated up stuff you've ever seen in your life. He said, because I know fathers can be very competitive. He said, you, sir, are dangerous. Enjoy your win. Needless to say, that was the end of our Pinewood Derby career. I like to think that that bad influence was a wash because it made that kid's day. I'll be honest with you, he'll tell his kids about the Pinewood Derby and the time he won right out of the gate with his old buddy Rob. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. How about now? Can you hear it now? Over. Do I need to put another quarter in this thing? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello?